Hello everyone, it's Laurel here and I'm finally here to show the long-awaited journal which turns into two journals which is only supposed to be one. I know this is going to say I was live but it's easier to do this live on here on private and then just set it to public because then it goes up right away. Um, I know it can be done now on YouTube too but I started it here so I'm going to do it here. Um, I'm first going to apologize for any noise you hear. As always, I live right by the road, so you might hear a motorcycle or two go by, though it's quite chilly today. Um, I don't even know where to start. I've been just nonstop working on this project, and I know it's taken me a while, but that's just me. My projects just carry on as I'm working on them and take a while, and being as I'm out of the home for 12 hours a day, um, I don't have a lot of time at night, so here and there, whenever I can work on it, I do. And this one, I literally was working on it until up about an hour ago because I just don't know how to stop. I'm not going to say I can't. I just don't know how to stop. So I am here to share my um, design team project for Tracy Fox Creative. All the links listed below for Tracy and for the kits I used. And all of the amazing design team members are all listed below in the description box, as well as ways that you can reach me. The two main kits that I used in here, which are listed below as well, are the Darling Bees Journal Kit and the Darling Bees Colorful Add-on Kit. And I know you don't see it yet, but I was going to do something separate with them, and I decided to combine them together. So I just think it turned out perfectly because we all know I am a color person. I also like things very grungy, as you can see, whether it's with using the, the brown the brown tones or when I use my colorful inks and things. Um, so this is the main one. This is the accordion journal, and this is actually supposed to go inside, but as you can see, it's gotten quite chunky. So it the thing I wanted to create I can, it'll just make it really gator mouth. Um, I wanted this to sit in the middle of the journal and be able to come out, but it is part of this project. So I'm gonna move all the pretty stuff that just makes it look pretty and I will get to showing you um, the journals. I'm gonna try not to carry on too much because I tend to talk a lot. Um, and I'm gonna try and just, I don't wanna spend forever going through it. What I will explain is you're not nearly going to be able to see how amazing the products that are on here made, um, just made everything perfect. The camera never shows everything exactly how it is in person. And I just, I am in love with how it turned out. I love the design of the cover that I chose, though this is my second one, um, trying to work it out in my head. I couldn't get things quite right, so I had to start over on the cover and make it again. So that's another reason it took so long. I am going to first show you um, all of the products that I used for any of those that might ask um, what I used in this journal. I will go through that real quick. So the three inks that um, are my new favorites right now are the Rusty Hinge, the Gathered Twigs, and the walnut stain and I almost need new pads because I used these inks up so much but I did buy the re-inker so and then I also used triple thick I keep mine in a little pin tip bottle and then I also used um the Tim Holtz rock, clear rock candy oh my gosh I'm so obsessed with this stuff it isn't even funny this will probably be in every future project I ever do because I just absolutely love this product I also used um, the Seth Apter and I can probably I think I'll go back and link the items that I used in the description box as well for you guys for anybody looking for this and I um, get this from um, Michelle Hartley, your crafting source, and it even came with the little bottles. So these come free when you buy this. This is the Tahoe Sunset, and this is the Ancient Amber, and they are both um, baked. It's called baked textures, and they're embossing powders. So I put my, just wrote on here what they are when I took them out of the bag so that I know what they are. So that's what these are. 
And then I also used um, embossing powder, some old ones that I have um, of various colors, some that I purchased from a D stash long ago. This one is actually called copper. And this is back in the day when I used to do um, just emboss letters and stuff. And I still have all this stuff. And then I used a bunch of these. And they're just all different embossing powders. These remind me of the baked textures because they are mixed colors. It's mixed stuff, which is kind of what's in here is mixed colors. And then something else is in here. I'm not sure what. But these are by um, Blue Fern Studio. And these are the ones I got in a D-stash. And this is called Forest. Um, this one is Chili Powder. And it's a bunch of colors. And then I used, um, this one is Auburn, Red Skies. And again, you can see the different colors in there. It has different colors in it. Um, ginger, love the ginger. That's another one that's got quite a few colors in it. And I apologize, I have like five lights on right here. So everything just seems very dark to me lately. This one is another copper. It looks like a really fine glitter, but it's actually an embossing powder. And then I have, um, this one is called Rusted Roof, which I absolutely love as well. And it has a bunch of colors in it. So I'm really glad I have this stuff. It's good when you go back in your things and you find things you never realized you'd use in a different way that actually work great in a project. So that is all of the prod products I used besides my, um, my art glitter glue. And my Fabri-Tac, which my Fabri-Tac is still my favorite, but I do use our glitter glue a lot. So I'm going to pull my chair in a little bit and we will get to the journal. So as we all know, I like things to move. I have a, a thing with different ways of opening things, all kinds of flips and folds. And, and when I first saw this kit, um, I did not know it was supposed to be tags because I printed the kit before watching her video and an idea came to mind right away that I wanted to make a cover out of the honeycombs. And I have a glitching thing going on. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing it, but I see it. So if there is, I apologize. This is a new webcam, new computer. I don't understand what the glitching is from, but just in case, I'm just letting you know. So... After I decided on how I wanted to make the cover, I went and watched her video and realized that these were supposed to be tags with little pockets, which I did use them inside like that. But this was my idea for the cover was to make a honeycomb um, shape cover. And I also wanted it dimensional. So I just built up layers. I printed out my digitals in different sizes. Um, the colored ones, I did the same thing as well. The different parts, I like to do a bunch of different sizes. This is um, a digital from Tim Holtz, not a digital, oh, a die cut from Tim Holtz. And it's um, a bug one. It has the four, uh, the four insects. And this is the bee. And the bee is all done in the different color embossing powders that I showed you. And then it has like a uh, glitter embossing powder, a clear one with glitter in it on top. And then it has a little thing you can hang a charm from, which I didn't do yet. But I also made it so you could pull on it and slide the little bee up and down, which you can actually just go like this because he still turns. The bee turns and I thought he would just move up and down. So this is just a design feature just because I thought you could put him down here by the honeycomb or put him up here by the honeycomb. And then there's another one a little bit layered down and that's just the dimension is just for decoration as you can see it's um very dimensional the cover has a lot of like a lot of layers all right and then the centerpiece also moves and i did have to add some brads here and here and i did them in yellow so they didn't stand out too much because this was still turning and it was bothering me it took me a long time to figure this out and I'm not sure why it's still turning, but it turns and I'm trying, I don't like things to ever come apart or anything. So that's why the brads are here. So this actually moves all the way this way like this. And this honeycomb opens, turn my bee. 
And then we have a little collage inside. And you can see, I will explain that on all of the pictures, I did all of the flowers all the way around. And I don't know if you'll see this because I won't be able to zoom. But all of the petals on all the flowers are done in rock candy on everything. And then all of the centers of all the flowers on everything are done in triple thick. And on the bee, his wings are rock candy on every bee. And the bodies are done with triple thick. Though I didn't do it on that one because I must have forgot. Um, so this is just um, kind of just a, I just like it because it flips open. And then it shows this beautiful collage down here. This is all done with, um, this is the baked textures around the outside. The inside piece is done with rock candy. And then I have a die, this die which is again by Tim Holtz and it's a honeycomb. And then all the inside pieces I inked and things so that I could take them out and use them in other piece in other places like over here and stuff. And then I took all the bees, fussy cut a bunch out and a bunch of different sizes and different colors as well. So you'll see that throughout. So that's just all of the. It's all. You probably should. One out. This is all little pocket if you want to tuck something in there and hide it away and the covers done the cover of this flap is done the same way um i just went a little heavier on the rock candy and like i said i am just in love with it it just reminds me of like when the beehive is being created and all the honey that's all around and all the you know all the build up and everything so i really liked that idea and then i also took pieces of the digitals and cut them out and put them on thicker paper and then added them on top of the pictures. I like to just overdo everything. Uh, I don't know. This is just how I create and I just I, I can't change it. So I'm not going to say anything about it anymore. Then that slides all the way that way. And this one opens up downward like that. And then again, we have um, just the little collage, the picture. And then the collage down here with some of the bees and the flowers. And then I took a bunch of the pieces and put them on this side. And then here we go again. We have another bee and part of the honeycomb. And then there's just some um, cheesecloth back here and some of the strings hanging. So I just really liked the collage aspect. And again, this one is a little pocket. If you want to tuck something away and hide it in there. And then this just goes back over to the center and that actually holds those closed. And then we have our bee that can just kind of hang around and do whatever, which I, I just, it took me a little bit to think of this and figure out how to get it all to work, but I absolutely love the way it turned out. And then I know um, the inspiration for this, of course, came from Tracy and Susie from Shabby Soul. I, of course, had to do mine a little different my papers i decided to separate instead of doing one just in the center i did two so it has a space in the middle because this was going to sit in the middle and you would see just that across the center but it didn't work that way so because it got a little too chunky so anyway so it opens like this oh and the papers i used here are tim holtz from one of his pads i want to say it's and I don't have the pad sitting here. The memorandum, I believe it's the memorandum paper. And it's all inked with um, rusty hinge and gathered twigs. So it opens this way. And on the inside cover, we have one of the beautiful pockets. And here's where you're going to see the difference. Now you're going to see the color come in because I decided instead of doing something separate with the color um, kit, the add-on colorful kit, I decided to add it to this one. And it turned out perfectly. So... That's the little pocket. And again, all the edges of these are done a lot thicker with the rock candy, just so it kind of looks like um, built up honey on there. And then you'll see all the flowers. Like I said, every paper, um, if you could see it and touch it, my daughter says it almost looks like I put real flowers on here and put them down on the paper. Um, the texture and how they look is just beautiful. The fine, it's almost like, fine such fine cracks in the crackle it's just really pretty so that's what i did to all the pockets and this is just a little tag i stuck in there 
It's got the bees on it, and then I put some things on its wings. Um, this is one of my favorite Mod Podge products. It's the um, Sparkle, and it's such a fine, fine glitter that's in here, and it just works really well on insects and insect wings and stuff where it just makes them look, you know, shiny and translucent. I really like that. And then it has this little piece in here, and is this the one that opens? No, and it's just a tag that you can write on on the back. There is plenty, even though you can't really write on the pages, there is so much ephemera in here. There is plenty of writing space. I don't know if I would call this actually a writing journal. Um, you could write on the pieces for sure, and I'm sure you could write on here with a dark pen, but I just, to me, it's more like a mixed media project piece, and I like that it's separated. So on this side, we have two pockets. Again, all the coating. And then I also spent a day fussy cutting a bunch of, half of them are Tim Holtz dyes, the wildflowers, and then half are some that I have. And I cut them all out of colored paper. I inked them all both colors. And then I embossed them all. So that took a day just to do that. And I did all the flowers first so that I had them ready to go. So this is a pocket and it's been sewn on. And again, it's just, I wish you, you it just, the camera does not do justice for how this looks in person. So then you pull this one out and it has the, um, this is, oh, is this, this might be the copper I did around there. And then the bee's wings are done in the, um, the rock candy. And then you open this one and it's a little pocket. So again, you have this whole writing space and then you have your pieces in there as well. And then it's got the B on the back. And then I also put in just three of the colored tags and then you can write on the back of all these. And there's some more of the, um, the die cuts. I really like the way these ones turned out. This was my first one and then that's when I stopped and just started cutting out a bunch of them. But I just think, I just love the colors with the the yellows and the browns i just think it worked out perfectly so then that just goes back in there and then on the bottom i also cut out a lot of the um ephemera and the envelopes and pockets out of vellum um just because i just thought it would look cool so that is a little pocket and then we just have some ephemera pieces in here and again you can write on the backs of all of those and then you also see some of her ephemera from other kits. Her stuff just mix and ma mixes and matches so well. I have it just everywhere. So I pull out bits and pieces from here and there. So this is one from another kit. These are from another kit. And then here's a blue bee. And then I also took the Tim Holtz die and just cut out a little edge here. Um, and put the honeycomb on and then some of the negative pieces on here as well just to make a little collage and then there's something on the other side of this so we'll get to that in a minute so these go back down in here let's get this back down in the pocket this is also a pocket on the side there are pockets everywhere i believe this is a double pocket as well so you could hide things literally everywhere in here because I just like to have pockets and hiding spots and clips and stuff everywhere <laughs> in the things that I create. So this goes in this side pocket. And it, I just took a couple of pieces from um, different kits. This is from her specimen kit. And then we have that bug. And I believe this is from textured tags. And then again, I used that Mod Podge on there. And that's exactly how that those beetles look when you see them in the sunlight. I just think it's perfect for insects. And then one of the mason jars. And you can write on the backs of all these as well. So that just gets tucked back in this side pocket there. This hangs the right way, but of course now I've flipped it all around. I'm not going to get it to hang the right way. And then it turns this way like that. And then on some of the pages, I did a collage and some of the pages I did pockets. So everything seemed to turn into a pocket. I don't know, but I just think these colors and everything together, just the browns and, and the yellows and the oranges and all the colors just look so beautiful all together. So on this page, it's more of a collage again with, oh, I also took a bunch of the flowers um, and did them in different sizes, cut them out, put the rock candy on all the petals and the um, 
uh, triple thick in the center. And this has got um, two little tuck spots. Here's one here. And I just put three of the little colorful honeycombs in there. Again, these can all be written on. And then I think I had, that's where that mason jar might have fell from. I th and this little one just opens like this. I made it a double so that you could close it and have the same picture on both sides. But this one kind of can tuck up in here like this. And then these three, I kind of made it so they stick out a little bit. Tuck under here and then just have the colors coming out. And then this one flips up. And then there's a B under there. And then this one flips down. And there's a little hiding spot under there and a little collage with a little bitty tag and a B and a flower. And then so this one flips up and that one holds it down. And then on the bottom, this is also a collage. I love the blues. I, I just love it all. There's just... I love so much about this thing. I could look at it a hundred times and I'm probably going to forget a few things and I hope not, but um, some pieces I made really thick like this number 44. We all know four is one of my favorite numbers. Um, actually, I believe that's a little tuck spot as well under here and it is. So we'll stick that mason jar there and then we have a B and I, again, I used um the copper and did some embossing on here. Let me pull that up and show you so you can see it again. You're not going to see the color or anything. It just, there's just so much to see on here and the camera is just not going to um, do it justice. And then this B flips up and behind it is a little envelope that opens. And then there is some ephemera in there that you can write on. And this, this envelope is in the kit as well. I just shrunk it down really small and stuck it in here. And then that just tucks behind that little flower like that. And then this flips back down. On this side, we have another pocket. And I love this big bee up there. I just think he looks so cool in the top corner up there. Um, I kind of created a little bit different pocket. I took this paper and brought it here and here and then kind of split it in half so this is behind and this is in front and I used a half of one of the honeycombs for this pocket and then this I put on top of it and this is actually a little as you can see all the way across it's a little pocket and there's two little pieces of ephemera in there and then it has one of the little clips on it which um, Tracy and um, Susie both did on theirs and then it just is holding that little number three and again you can see all of the rock candy and grunge and everything on there and then this is again uh see i don't know can you see it on there it just oh, it looks so cool and then that just goes back in here let's see straight in here i know it goes in here this one keeps getting stuck i'm not sure why there's something i think it's the paper or something behind here there we go and then on the bottom, I have um, another one of the honeycombs. Uh, this one's done in the copper, and then it has a little bee on it as well. And then this bee just turns, and then this one flips down, and you can put something back here and um, write a little note or something down here, and it's kind of hidden away. And then it also has a pocket. Love these colors as well. And then I just put a bunch of little different pieces of ephemera in here. And then these just kind of tuck in here like that. And then you put your B back down and there you go. So then you flip this way. <laughs> now we're to the last page of this side. This one is actually just a collage. And I did the bees and just some of the, um, the die cuts. And then another one of the honeycombs. And this is actually a clock that I embossed on a piece of paper. Um, back when I was doing my wood glue series, and that is wood glue on there. Um, I don't know if you can see the clock back there, but it is a clock for a stopwatch. And then all of the pretty. And then down at the bottom, this this one, I actually, that bead that's on the front, this is the paper that I cut it out of right here. And then I backed this with a fabric that just had a perfect design in it that I used. And I made it a little flip 
and it's also a pocket so you'll see something on this side which is let's see if i can get it out here it's got a little tag in here with a mason jar and that just goes down in there and that's so when you flip it both ways you see something different and then this one has a little honeycomb double honeycomb on it and again you can write on both of those tags and then on this side I did just a collage with some of the flowers and some bees from another um, die that I have. And then, yep, just decorated it all up. And right here we have um, a little tuck spot, again, a collage. And these are, again, from different digitals. Um, this is also a pocket here, up here. So you can tuck something away in there. And then I just made a little tag. And then it kind of just tucks under that low B and sits there. And I have to go back and show you the flip up piece. And then just added a little word and stuff on the part that sticks up down here. And then that just closes. And then again, we have another pocket on this side that is just all grunged up with the rock candy. And then the tag inside. And I know there is a double tag. Um, oh, I showed you the one that opens up. All right, so let's go back. So on the back of this one. This, oh, I'm going to have to get to it when I get to the other side. Sorry. Close it in the back and I how that look. Ah, candy is some amazing stuff. And yes, I am super heavy on my inking. That's just the way I like it. All right. So then it opens this way. And on this side, I took three of the honeycombs and I just thought it would be fun to have them move because I like moving things and then you can write little things back here or tape little things back there and just kind of hide them away and these kind of just move around wherever you want so I kind of left those like that it just kind of I like the honeycomb thing and then it's got a little bee up there with the wings again and then down on this side is a pocket and it's all grunged up as well. And you'll see the decorations on the inside where I carried the flowers and stems from down here to up there. And they are actually coming out of the mason jar. And then um, another tag. And you can write on the back. And that just goes in there. And then on this side is to uh, another pocket over here love this one too i just i love color and i know you guys aren't seeing the the colors as they as they are but it just all turned out beautiful again i use that net that dye up there for the honeycombs and brought the flower completely across and then i just cut it right here just so you could have the pocket and yep just crunched it all up and again we have another one of course i love the purple ones um, my, my daughter is in love with this kid as well. And then down here, I did the blue one and grunged it all up. And then this one flips up and it's got, um, a little collage up there with the bee. And then this is my beekeeper. He just looked like a beekeeper to me. And that's from another one of her kits right there, but he just looked like a beekeeper. So he is down there. And he is the keeper of the bees. And then it's just a collage. And then, of course, we have another little um, hidden little tuck spot over there with some mason jars in there that you can write on. And those will sit in there. And then that flips down. And where have we come to that piece yet? No, it's at, it's at the end. And then on this one, I'll have to explain this a little bit. So the bee that's on the flip out pocket and the B that's on the front. I traced it and cut out a background for it. And then all the little pieces that came out of the, out of here, I kept and I did a negative B. So that is the negative of the B. And I just thought it looked really cool. <laughs> and I did it in different color embossing powders and then uh, the crystal one on top just to give it some shimmer. And this is just a collage. Um, and you'll see bees like everywhere throughout the book because, you know, the bees are flying around in the, in the honeycomb. And then down below as well, I did um, just a collage and there's a little tuck spot here. This is also raised on some chipboard and then just added another little tag that kind of just 
tucks under there. I just wanted things everywhere. <laughs> and then on this side, we have two more pockets. And this one, I took a piece of the paper again and just cut it out and did the rock candy really heavy on all the edges and then kind of cut out the shape of the honeycomb of one paper behind it. And so I believe, I'm not sure if this is a double pocket. Yep, this is a double pocket. So you could actually put something up in here. And then it has this pocket, would have, which has this tag. And this one goes in here. And then it just has some little pieces. This is a stamp that I have. So this is just a little book that you can write in. And then some of the ephemera and another honeycomb. Just all different writing spots. Make that bee to stick out a little bit. And then on the bottom, I used some of her um, teal grunge paper to kind of make the shape of a honeycomb and then made a pocket as well. And then just put a honeycomb right there. And that has that, I think that's the Tahoe Sunset on here or the Ancient Amber. It's one of them or one of the coppers. And then just some more ephemera in here in this pocket and cut out another digital and just put it on thicker paper and the bee as well and i just think the bee turned out so cool the bees attached to this flower oops let's fling the pieces all over and then these are from of course we all love her labels and i've got almost all of them cut out so i always have labels ready to go and then just added some of the flowers. So this one is the back of that other one. So you take this little paper clip off and flip this up. And there's just a little label back here. You could write something in a B. And that's that one. Let's see if I can get this little paper clip back on right now. There we go. And then we're back to the front. So that is the accordion journal. And see how it likes to turn? So I just... This kind of helps it stay stable somewhat. This one, I think, is a little low, but that's okay. As long as it sits in the middle, we're okay. It just likes to turn a little, and that bothers me, so I want it to be straight. So that is the accordion journal. And like I said, so from the center is supposed to go this. This little journal was made to go in here. And if I would have left it alone, it probably wouldn't. It could probably still sit in there, but look at what happens. <laughs> I went a little crazy. I had this actually done Friday, ask Maggie, <laughs> and uh, I was so excited to be done. And then I got hold of the book and decided I couldn't leave the book just plain and let people fill it in. I went to town and went crazy with the book. So um, it can sit in there if you would like. But, you know, on a shelf, it'd probably look pretty. And I can probably make the ties. You know, you can do like the elastic just to have it sit in the center of here, which is what I was going to do. And then, well, it can't really stand, but it's still really pretty. It can stand. These two would probably hold it up standing. but um, Or it could just be separate and be together. So I'm going to show you the little book now. So that's the accordion journal. And let's move this over here because I need to go this way. And this is the little book. And again, it was supposed to just be a little book with a couple of pages for you to write in. So I added a little string. You can take this off if you don't, if you don't like it on there. But I just, I wanted to try and hold it closed a little bit because it became quite chunky because I just couldn't stop on this as, as well. So I started with a mailer right here, an envelope. And it was actually going to fold over again and close, but again, it got too chunky. And then I cut out one of the papers from the digital, all in the shape of the flower, and put it on thicker paper and left the window. And that became the outside for the cover, even though it has a front and a back. And then it does have a tag in it. Oh, where did this just come from? This just came from somewhere in here. We'll figure it out. So this tag comes out and it just has some um, collaging on it with one of the digitals and some paper. And I use two of the honeycombs for the tab. And then this one has a blue bee and that just sits so that the bee shows through the pocket. So I'm going to put this back in here. So my bee, there we go. 
throw, throw the bee shells through the page. And even when it's out, there's a bee right there too, if you didn't want to have the tag in here. I put a backing paper on it. Okay, so let's go through this little chunky monkey. This has got to be the chunkiest little journal I've created. And there's just a little collage on here. And then this is the front and this is the back of the journal. And when I started, I took all of the pages and put them together so that I could do all of this grungy stuff on it. That took quite a while just to do that for all of the pages. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to take a quick drink. All this talking, talking, talking. Um, so that took a while to do. And then, um, you know, it, it has tons of pockets on the top and on the side. I went a little crazy with the pockets. Again, it was supposed to be a write. This one was supposed to be a writing journal. There's not a lot of writing space. There is writing space, but there's a lot of tags and places to write. So this one is blank, and this is just a piece of one of the digitals that I did with the rock candy and the triple thick. This is just a collage. Love that blue bee. Um, fussy cutting. I spent a lot of time fussy cutting every size bee you could imagine. I had to use my X-Acto knife for some of them. And that's just a little collage page. And on this one, I did like... We know how bees like to chew holes and things, so that's kind of what this depicts. And... There's like bees coming out of the hole. And then inside is the queen bee right here. And then we have the mason jar that is done in um, on the vellum. And then just some of the flowers. So that's that tag. And that goes inside here. And then you can see, I have to do everything backwards because I can't see what I'm doing. Um, then the bee shows through the hole right there. And I'm just making a disaster. Okay, I put this down to cover the bright light. And then this one turns this way. Of course, it turns this way. It's a, it's a journal, Laurel. And this one has a little tuck spot right here. Oh, I put it down while it was still being glued. And then there's just some ephemera in here. Again, all these pieces can be written on. I left them all blank on the back. You can also write on here. And then this just sits in this little tuck spot. Again, I don't know why I felt like it needed all these tuck spots and everything with all the pockets and stuff that are in here, but I, I just couldn't stop myself. This is just another different kind of paper. And I just did a little collage, tiny little collage on one corner. This one, again, was blank, so you could write on here, but no, I had to have uh, another pocket. And this one's in vellum and then added some of the pieces and another B. And then this tag goes inside there. And then it goes this way. And there's a honeycomb window on this one. It says Busy Bee. And then this tag comes out. Now these bees on here, I don't know how good you guys can see them. So I took one of the pages. Like say I took, I'm going to pull out a page and kind of explain to you what I did. Hold on a second. I'm already getting ready to work on my next project. So I've got it printed out. So I took a paper. Let's see if I can find one here. Say I took this piece, like this, a little bit bigger. I took where the center of the flower was, and I took the die, like this. This is the bee that I used. And I placed it, like, positioned it in a, that way so that the head and the front arms were the color of darker like a bee and then the wings were the yellow and stuff like the petals so that's how I made those bees in case somebody asks and it just happened to work out perfectly that's actually the center of a flower and then that's the color of the petals so they actually worked out perfectly and I love those two little bees they just turned out so perfect and then of course we've got another bee up here and then some of the flowers and that just goes in the honeycomb pocket so that you can see them through there. I can't keep this down. What is my issue? Okay, let's stay. I had to put two of them together to cover my whole desk. And I am still keep picking it up. And then we have a piece of vintage um, notebook paper. And I see it's kind of opening at the bottom. So I might have to put a piece of washi there because it is old. 
and then just a, did a little collage with the blue bee. And on this side, it's a pocket. So um, I left the side open, but it has one of these in it. Again, you can write on the back. And then it's got just a plain tag. And then a mason jar in here. And then on this side, I took kind of the idea from the snapshots, um, the, the where it's th a set of three that Tracy does on her digitals. And I did it out of paper. And then I put a background paper, which was, um, I think that's a Tim Holtz background paper on there. And then did the, um, I did some of the copper and then some of the, the rock candy on the corners. And then I put bees in the center of them and then just did a collage. So this is actually a belly band right here. So this can go all the way through like that. So this is a belly band. And then that tag has the copper on it. So these just go in here and then a little honeycomb. I just like all the colors together. I think it looks so pretty. And then there's a pocket on the side of this one. Some are in the top and some are on the side. And on this one, I created little mini um, like file folder um, tags, cards, whatever you want to call them. And of course, you can write on the whole back. And then on the front, I did a collage with different pieces. So I like that one. That pink is really pretty. I know it looks, I, I it's not looking how it looks to me, how it looks to you, but it is really pretty. And then this just tucks in the side there and sticks out. Side with plain and just one of those really. We have some more of this. This is deli paper, I believe. And on this one. I also cut out the B and I always keep the negative papers, the negative papers, you guys, we can use for everything. So I, I, I tend to hang on to things you probably shouldn't. So I stuck that on here and did a little collaging on it and put on a flower and this actually flips open and then this tag just sits in here. So you can actually slide it in or you can pop it open and there's the negative B. And then this just has a little tag on it in it. And that just sits in there like that. And then you turn up oh, this page also has a side pocket. And then this is another one of the um, tags. And I did do some stenciling on here with two different stencils I have. So that's what you're seeing on there with the honeycomb. And then that's the back. So you can write on it with the B right there. And then that tucks in there. And that one's in the middle. And then this is the center. And I just added a double of the honeycombs and kind of made it a tuck spot. That's where that came out of. And I just stuck these in here because all this stuff is coming with it because I print it out. I tend to print out over amounts of everything. So I'm trying to get everything in here to go with this project. And then it also has two little tiny tuck spots. This one's got an up tuck here like this. And then this one goes this way like that. And then these just kind of sit in there. And that's the center of the spread. And that's the paper that I chose for the center, which is just really, really pretty. This kit is like all of her kits. I just love her stuff. And then this one is just, I just put this on here because I just thought it looked pretty. And this little paper clip actually comes off. <laughs> and then this is a little, let's see if I can get it open. Because I probably should have tested it before I glued it. And, oh, there we go. And you can actually write a little note to yourself in there or something or hide a little word or something in there. And then this paper clip will go back on whether I will get it on or not. I don't know. Let's see if I could do this. Probably not. So I'll do that after. So that's just kind of a little hidden, hidden spot right there. And then the other side of the dolly paper, which I left. And then this page and all I added was the B. So again, you can write on here. Dark pen is definitely going to cover all of this light color. And then in here, I put um, one of the honeycombs and it's got a honeycomb tab. I just thought the two colors together looked really pretty. And that just goes in there. I wanted to try and fill every pocket, but this thing probably would have never closed. And then this one just has a little, little, I can't even talk now, little, <laughs> little talk spot right here. And you can just put a little tag or something in there. So this tag will probably go with it at the end and go right here. So we'll just leave it there. And then again, we've got the vintage um, notebook paper. And 
a little mason jar and a tag and that's the other side of the paper I love the, the way I folded that. And this one, I love the three Bs right here. So I kind of love that one. And yes, everything looks really grungy because it is. And then that side, I also left plain because it's just really bright and colorful. On this one, I put a little tuck. And then this one has a little envelope that you can open and write in or tuck something away in a little note or whatever. And that just sits in there. And then we have a little up tuck here. And I just added some extra tags and a honeycomb in here. And then this one's a little side tuck. See, too many pockets and tucks and all kinds of things. But I just couldn't stop. So that's um, two little honeycombs. And they have the um, copper on here as well. And then this is one of the tags. And there's another one of those bees. It just turned out so perfectly the way I cut them out and where I chose for them to sit. And then this one's got copper just kind of on here on the side just all grunged up and then some other digitals just for a collage and then that goes that way and then in the third last one is the third one the third card and this is with the purple this is from her one of her new label kits it's got all of these labels in different sizes and different colors um, that's a stamp and that's another one from this same kit but a smaller one and then of course we've got our B and then the back so you can write on it and that goes in there and then we have that back page and all I did was add a pretty flower and then the other side of the front um, deli paper and then in this one it's got a little card at the back and then I just decorated it with two of the honeycombs and some um, dyed um, they're not flowers like what's the word you want to use for that stems and then it's got just a little tag in there, so you could write whatever you want in there. And I meant to do some stamps on here. Um, I have one of those stamps, but I didn't. I kind of left it. And this likes to be a little testy, so unless I go perfectly straight in, it doesn't seem to want to go in. I'm not sure why. There we go. But it goes in and it stays. And then you have the back and then the back of the envelope, which is also a pocket. Not that it needs 8 million pockets, but I just love that it's all grungy and chewed up. And yeah, so like I said, this was supposed to be just a small little thing with a few pages in it that could sit inside the main journal. It just didn't work out that way. I will have to put that back in there. So that is my accordion <laughs> B journal. I hope that you guys love this. I'm not going to apologize that it takes me a while. I just have uh, detail is important to me. And I, once I get started, I can't stop myself. I just have to go where my, where my brain takes me. And that's just how my projects turn out. So sometimes it does take me a little bit longer to do something, especially because I work and my hours right now are super, super long. So I'm never home. Um, so I work on it as much as I can when I can. Um, so I'm trying to start doing things in quantities and I want to start doing videos where we work on specific types of ephemera and things like that, that I can use in things I am currently working on so that I can do a little bit less work than I'm, than I do when I actually start a project. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was worth the wait. I absolutely um, love the way it turned out. I'm just going to kind of leave this in here, though I took a picture, but I like it. I hope you guys like the way it turned out. I hope it inspires you to um, step outside of your comfort zone and try something different and mix different things together. And, you know, especially like colors with the, you know, the more brown tones and things and see and see what happens and where it takes you because that's usually where my inspiration comes from. Besides all of you guys, I get inspired by all of you a lot. And I think that's why my projects get more detailed each time as I learn about new products and things like that. It just, takes me even further so which I'm really enjoying and I'm still struggling with the paper thing I know it doesn't look like that here but I don't know how to explain that I struggle with paper because I just feel like I'm still struggling like it doesn't just flow out of me and like boom 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 I can get something done so 
um, don't please don't forget to go out and check out the other design team members and go back and look at, you know, I love a lot of Tracy's older kits too, which I use a lot in my stuff, you know, mix the new with the old. And I mean, all of her kits go so well together and I'm already getting ready to start on my next project, which I'll be using the four compendium kits together. Um, so hopefully that one won't get out of control, but we'll see. <laughs> so that's what I will be working on next, aside from doing some other things. I'm going to be working with the autumn kit, and I'm also working with the orange shoe kit that, that she has out. So please go check out her shop and her digitals, and let's support our smaller um, shops, especially now. I know a lot of them have a lot of things going on to help everybody out. I know Tracy did a lot of things to help everybody out in these in these times. So um, go check out everybody. Um, try something new that you haven't done before. Go out and, and see what can happen. And uh, hopefully I'll be on coming this Friday. I wanted to be on yesterday, but this project got away with me from me and time got away from me. So um, hopefully I can um, come on on Friday and work on the, the autumn kit of the idea that I have that I want to do. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, wonderful extended weekend. I get an extra day. Um, this will be for sale. If you are interested, I do have my email listed below. Please feel free to contact me. If not, it will go in my pile of all of my other stuff and eventually become something I will give to somebody else so that, you know, it doesn't hurt me to keep it either. But um, just in case anybody is interested, it is for sale. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I absolutely love the way it all turned out. All of the good goodies will come with it, as well as any of the extras that I find laying around will come with it as well. So have a wonderful weekend. I will see you all soon. And don't forget to get out there and create something. Bye for now.